Hi everyone, Todd Keppel with the Klamath County Museum here doing another in our series of COVID-19 uh, Facebook live video feeds. Hopefully our last one. Today is the eve of phase one of reopening in Klamath County and many Klamath, uh, many counties across Oregon. And so uh, we've been doing a series of these uh, programs, I think we've done five maybe, uh, in lieu of regular historical society meetings that we'd normally do at the county museum. Since we've had uh, three of those meetings canceled, we decided to uh, go online and do a few of these Facebook feeds. Uh, they're very informal. Um, we actually had good comments on them, so we appreciate everybody that's tuned in to uh, watch them. Uh, still wearing my bandana. I try to wear it anytime I'm going into a confined space. Uh, you know, it's great that we've um, uh, made it through this pandemic so far with no deaths in Klamath County. I think we're at like 40 cases, uh, but no deaths, that's great. Um, but boy, it uh, sounds like it's still serious in various parts of the country and we don't want to backslide now. So we're, we're glad that we're gonna be open uh, tomorrow. The museum, the Klamath County Museum will be open tomorrow. Uh, my understanding is that the Favel Museum is planning to open next week and then we'll have Fort Klamath and the Baldwin Hotel Museum's opening as usual on Memorial Day weekend. With some restrictions, we're going to have to limit sizes and, and that sort of thing. Uh, we're still not able to do some of our great events like Heritage Days up at Fort Klamath, but we are planning to start offering some ac uh, activities outside, including a walking history tour of Linkville Cemetery uh, a week from Saturday. Um, I don't know what the date uh, is, but whatever uh, the date is, a week from Saturday, uh, we're going to offer a tour of Linkville Cemetery, watch our Facebook page, and the Herald of News or other news media in town for details about that. So uh, we want to get into our program tonight about schools in Klamath Falls. We did one a couple of weeks ago on schools in rural areas of Klamath County. Tonight we want to focus on Klamath Falls. I want to mention the same limitation that I did a couple of months ago, uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, regarding uh, what we can cover and what we can't cover in these programs. We can't cover every single detail of the history of schools in Klamath Falls. Uh, just like we um, cannot um, uh, cover everything uh, in the uh, city area here. So um, we're going to cover as many of the schools in Klamath Falls and the suburban area as we can. We probably won't cover everything. So it's great to see we've got almost 40 viewers here and a lot of you saying hello. Uh, Kurt Ludke uh, helped me out with a sound check a couple of nights ago so we could make sure that our, uh, our microphone was working properly and Lynn LeBlanc see you there, and lots of other people too. So thanks everybody for tuning in. So um, we're gonna start with this drawing of a schoolroom. I wonder if anybody recognizes it. This is an artist's rendering uh, of what the first school in Linkville might have looked like. Uh, we don't have any pictures of that first school. Uh, this picture was drawn uh, back in the 1940s by James Floyd. Uh, he's the father of Jimmy Floyd, who is still here in town, at least as far as I know. Uh, Jim Floyd uh, Sr. collected a lot of photos and did a lot of great historical work, and he drew this photo based on a uh, description of an old-timer who had gone to the school. And so this, uh, this building was uh, about where the Medical Dental Building is now, at uh, 9th and Main Street. There is a little knoll right there, just a little bit of a rise, and you can kind of see that in the background of this drawing. So we think this building was probably built maybe in the 1870s and stood um, until around 1890 when the community built a second school building, much larger to accommodate the growing population of Klamath Falls. And so this became uh, the school that served the community, I think around 1890 and into the early 1900s. You can see uh, quite a sizable student body there. And I uh, wish we could get a close-up look at all the students in here. This is actually a fairly good uh, photo. Um, we don't have any identifications of the people in here, but at any rate, this building stood where the earlier school building had stood at the corner of, uh, near the corner of 9th and Main Street. As you can see, a very impressive building, uh, two-story building with uh, a, a structure on top that might have been called a belfry, um, might have had a school bell inside there, or it might have been called a cupola, uh, not sure. 
Hey, there's Bob Perrin signing in. Uh, I think Bob lives somewhere in the East Coast. Uh, he's the, uh, if I have him right, uh, the son of uh, Howard Perrin, one of our famous architects. Uh, probably, well, one of the two most famous architects we've had in uh, Klamath Falls. So thanks for signing in, everybody. All right, so this school stood until 1905 when Klamath Falls had to build yet another new school. And so in that same place, the third school building to rise was this one. This became known as uh, Central School uh, because other schools were built around the community in various places, but this was still the Central School in the downtown area. Looks like there's a parade getting ready to happen on Main Street. Uh, in the background, off to the right-hand side there, you can see where the old school building uh, was still standing at the time that they uh, took this picture. So they picked up the old two-story building, uh, jacked it up, and probably moved it onto skids or some such, and uh, took it up to the corner of 10th and Pine Street and set it down there, and that building continued to serve as um, as an apartment building for many years until finally uh, Doc Graham, uh, Dr. Uh, Graham, the ophthalmologist, um, built his office building there probably around, I don't know, 1960 or so. And so the old school building uh, and apartment house finally uh, came down. Uh, it actually uh, outlived the stone building that you see here, the, the new building that had been built in 1905. Uh, this impressive stone building that you see here didn't last all that long. It was torn down in 1929, I believe it was, in order to make room for the Oregon Bank building, uh, the very impressive uh, six-story structure that uh, we now know as the Medical Dental Building. But at any rate, this was the third school building to serve uh, the town of uh, Klamath Falls. Very impressive structure. Built in 1905. Also built in 1905 was a high school to serve the community. And that's the building that you see here. This structure stood up on uh, the hillside above the downtown area. It was between North 5th and 6th Streets above Pine Street. If you're familiar with where uh, the Grandview Apartments are now, uh, that is uh, just about exactly where this building stood, constructed in uh, 1905 with some really beautiful uh, architecture here. Almost looks like some kind of a castle, doesn't it? And again, with a, a belfry on top and a flagpole. Uh, no flag on it in this photo, but uh, very impressive structure. We've got another photo that shows you a better view of that part of town, including where that structure stood. So in the foreground of this photo, we can see Main Street uh, down here. Main Street runs right along the the lower left-hand portion of this photo. And so, uh, let's see, this would be uh, 7th Street running across the photo here, and 6th Street runs across the photo uh, going up the hill uh, this way. And so between 5th Street and 6th Street and above um, Pine, and actually it looks like above High, um, was the old Klamath uh, County High School. Let me adjust the camera here and give you a better Shot. So as you can see, it uh, really made a statement on the landscape uh, here. It could be seen from miles away. And of course, the view from on top of the school building there was, uh, was really terrific. The school had a number of problems, uh, the old Klamath County High School. It uh, was considered to be a little bit of a fire trap. Uh, fire safety uh, was coming along in uh, the early 1900s, and this school was lacking in that regard. And uh, so there was a problem there. And then also the school was just uh, was not large enough to serve the growing community. In the 1920s, once the railroad had arrived, Klamath Falls really started taking off and growing fast, and there was uh, definitely no need for, uh, for more schools. This photo shows the, uh, the view of the town as seen from above Riverside Drive and looking towards the northeast. We see Link River here emptying into... Uh, Lake Iwana, and so this area right in here would be where Veterans Park is today. We can see the Baldwin Hotel building uh, right there. And so looking down the street here, we see Main Street right along here, and this would be Klamath Avenue and uh, Pine Street 
is back here. And so we can see both of these impressive school buildings constructed in 1905 up here in the very up, uh, upper left-hand corner is the Klamath County High School. And then way off in the distance back here is uh, the, uh, the Central School. And it's probably not going to show up very well on your screen, but right, right behind it we can actually see the old school that became the apartment building. Uh, we can also see the White Pelican Hotel here that had been built in 1911. So we can date this photo probably somewhere right around 19... Uh, 11 to 1915. Uh, we can see Esplanade Avenue going up into the Pacific Terrace neighborhood. And so this line going across the screen right here, that's Pacific Terrace. Uh, no homes, not very many homes at least on Pacific Terrace at that time. So these two uh, large school buildings constructed in 1905 uh, really dominated the cityscape at that time. Not long after those two schools were built, another new school uh, appeared on the landscape, and that was Riverside School. There's probably some people around that might have gone to this school. It uh, was built in 1910 up on the hill above Riverside Drive and uh, served the community for many years until being closed in 2003. It briefly housed a Link River High School, an alternative high school, from 2008 to 2011, but then the school district uh, sold the property and went into a private ownership. I think I saw Lillian Belsky's name appear as one of our viewers, and so she, um, I'm sure, knows quite a bit about uh, about this building. It's her husband that uh, that hold off and bought this building, and uh, so of course we're all eager to see what he's going to do with it. In uh, our next photo, you'll be able to see a view of the town as it would have appeared from Roosevelt, or excuse me, Riverside, uh, Riverside School here. This is not a real sharp photo, but in the background, of course, you can see Hogback Mountain off to the east, and downtown Klamath Falls would be uh, just behind this, this hill here with the homes in it. And then Lake Iwana is off here to the right, and Olean Gap off in the distance there. Very impressive uh, view from that school, and the grand staircase that went from the uh, front doors of the school up to the, the main uh, second floor here. The, the view from those stairs looking out those front windows is really a terrific view. The only problem with this school is that it was a little hard to get to. Uh, students had to climb a lot of stairs uh, if they were coming from uh, the downtown area. Difficult to get to with school buses and so forth. And so the school district for many, many years had a school bus turnaround down at the bottom of the hill uh, right behind the Fable, where the Fable Museum is now. That was the school bus turnaround for so many years where students would get off and then uh, hike up to, the, up to the school. On some of these photos, I think I might just let you study the images for a bit and see if you can guess uh, what schools we're looking at here. I, I don't know if any of you like guessing games or not. I know some of you may say, oh, just tell us what we're looking at. But I think it's fun to let uh, you study these photos for just a second and... Uh, and see if you can guess. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you what the answer is on this one. This is Mills School, Mills Elementary School, not long after it opened in 1919. Uh, that school celebrated its centennial last year. They had a wonderful uh, centennial celebration at the uh, Mills Auditorium that I attended, and it was a, a lot of fun. So at this point, um, Mills School um, was a pretty small affair. Uh, I think it probably had eight classrooms or something like that. But uh, as you know, if you're familiar with Mill School now, um, it's been added on to a number of times. Uh, one thing that's interesting to me about this photo is that there, there's not much around it as far as landscaping goes. And in fact, if you look to the left-hand side of the school building here, you can see a picture, uh, excuse me, a, a building off in the distance. I wonder how many of you recognize that building. Uh, if you guess that that is the train station, you're correct. That's the old Southern Pacific Depot. It now serves as the Amtrak station. And it's about a quarter mile away from Mill School. And so at the time this picture was taken, we just see that there's open countryside between Mill School and the railroad tracks at the train station there. Of course, there have been a number of homes built and a lot of trees planted over the years, so you wouldn't get that view uh, today. Here's another school that I might let you guess at. While I uh, sip my ginger ale here. 
This school is uh, known as Fairview, up in the neighborhood uh, behind uh, Linkville Cemetery, somewhere around Donald Street, I uh, think it is. This picture taken not long after the school opened, and again, you can see that uh, the school is, was a lot smaller when it first opened. It also has been added on to a number of times. So uh, Fairview opened in 1920, so we're still during that time when um, Klamath Falls was growing quickly. The railroad had arrived, the Klamath Reclamation Project had irrigated agriculture going on all the way from here to Tule Lake and uh, Milan. I just saw Ryan Bartholomew comment there. So Ryan, a big uh, howdy to you and also uh, Bill Anderson, uh, Gabby here. Appreciate you uh, uh, tuning in every time we have one of these programs, Gabby. And uh, hope to see you back at the museum soon. So at any rate, here's Fairview School with the student body out front. Uh, there's some really great expressions on the kids here. I wish we could zoom in more on that. I don't have the ability to do that with this, uh, this setup that we have here this evening. This photo, I believe, uh, still hangs at Fairview School, even though the school closed in 2013 and was taken over the following year by the Klamath Falls YMCA. They have a picture uh, it may be this very picture or one very similar to it that still hangs in the office up there at, to the old Fairview School, uh, now used by the, the YMCA. Our next photo shows a school that opened just a couple of years later in 1922. This one is Pelican. We showed a couple of photos uh, last time, uh, um, a month ago, when we did rural schools. We showed the Shippington School that stood about where the Jeldwen offices are. Uh, this school took the place of the Shippington School and uh, was known as um, Pelican and is getting ready to celebrate its centennial. Uh, opened in 1922, so their centennial is coming up in just a couple of years. And let's see, what have we got here next? Yeah, some of uh, you folks watching might have gone to this school a great uh, amateur historian, local historian, uh, taught at this school, Buna Cobb Stone, uh, taught at this school. And I know I've talked to uh, Bob Pallies a number of times about uh, Mrs. Stone, what a wonderful teacher she was. So this was uh, Fremont School, which opened in 1925 as an elementary school. It took the place, basically, of the old Central School that had been down on Main Street. And so this school... Uh, located on um, High Street. It's uh, cut a corner from the, the old Esquire Theater, now the Ross Raglan Theater. And so this building uh, still stands, at least most of it does. Um, at some point, the uh, First Baptist Church acquired this property after the school closed, and they built a sanctuary on the northeasterly end of this property. But this photo is from very early in the... Um, the school's life, the Fremont uh, School's existence. The school opened in 1925, and this picture was taken not long after that. We know that because when we look at the far right edge of this photo, we can see the old Sacred Heart Catholic Church, the old wooden church that had been up by Fairview School, and then again it was jacked up and brought down uh, 9th Street and then over to uh, the corner here of 8th Street and plopped down on the corner, uh, replaced by the beautiful stone uh, or brick uh, church that still stands uh, at uh, Sacred Heart uh, to this day. So we know this picture was taken uh, sometime after the school opened in 25 and before the new Catholic Church was built in 1930. All right, let's see what's next. Okay, everyone should recognize... Uh, this school, this was the next school constructed in Klamath Falls. Uh, after Fremont came Klamath Union High School. It took the place of the old Klamath County High School. So where we, uh, in the old days, we had this school from 1905 to 1928. Uh, this school was abandoned and replaced by Klamath Union High School, which opened in uh, 1928. Uh, this old school, by the way, stood for many years up on uh, the hill above the downtown area. Into the 1940s, maybe um, early 1940s, I think it was, before finally they got around to tearing this school down and uh, the property sat vacant for a number of years until 
uh, the Grandview Apartments were built, whenever that was, um, what, 1960s uh, maybe. Well, anyway, here's an early photo of uh, Klamath Union High School. Uh, we've covered that in uh, other programs, and so I'm not going to dwell a whole lot on Klamath Union High School. Obviously, it's before uh, the gymnasium was added uh, a few years later, 1930s, I believe, and before the cafeteria and music room addition was added, um, the old uh, Carnegie Library would have been just off to the left-hand side of the view here. So there's an early day view of Klamath Union High School. Uh, some of you that know your local history will know what stood on this site before Klamath Union uh, High School was built. Uh, I can hear some of you saying to yourself, oh, it was the site of the old Hot Springs Courthouse. And uh, you're correct. This is the building that had been started in 1912 by Klamath County government and was maybe a little bit more than half finished before it became the subject of a fierce controversy. A couple of county commissioners got recalled. Uh, the project was abandoned. Uh, the county ended up starting another new courthouse downtown. Uh, it's quite a famous story that we love to tell, and maybe we'll make a video about it someday, the time that Klamath County had three courthouses. The, the early, original, wooden 1888 vintage courthouse and then this uh, so-called Hot Springs Courthouse, and then uh, the newer courthouse opened in 19, completed in 1919 uh, downtown, not occupied until 1922 because of uh, controversy. But it's one of the great battles fought in Klamath County, the old uh, courthouse battle. Well, finally, this property was acquired by the school district, and uh, this grand, beautiful structure that was to have been our county courthouse was torn down in 1927, I think it was, and then in 1928. They built uh, Klamath Union High School and it was ready for occupation that year. Uh, the very next year, this new school was opened, 1929. Many of you will recognize Roosevelt Elementary School, constructed um, right below the K on K Hill. Uh, a trivia question that we love to ask, and some of you should know the answer to this. What school was it that was responsible for, for creating the K up on the hill? I know for many years I assumed that K was for Klamath Union High School, but it was actually created before KU came into existence. Um, Klamath County High School was still serving the community at the time the K was, uh, was built up on the hill. All right, I'm going to let you study this photo for a while and see if you can guess what school that is. You might see the Mountain Lakes Wilderness Area in the background, so that's one clue for you. And this hill here was known as a Great Sledding Hill. I'm not sure if that's a road or something going up that hill, but uh, we've heard a number of stories about what great sledding there used to be on that hill. So we're looking at Conger Elementary School here. Conger, along with Roosevelt, opened in 1929. And isn't it amazing to just study this photo and see what open countryside there was over in the Conger neighborhood along California Avenue? I mean, we can see that there's uh, one house peeking up over the hillside here. But, of course, all of this has been developed in the years since then. So this really speaks to what vision the community had for growth uh, back in the 1920s. Let's see. We've got a few schools that I have no pictures for. I don't have a picture of Fairhaven, which opened out in the Weyerhaeuser district. Um, oh, I forgot I inserted this picture into the program. Uh, this is... Um, Mrs. Mills, third grade class at Conger Elementary School, April 1954. And so, you know, we've got hundreds of great photos uh, like this that show school kids back in the day. This one just really struck me, um, I guess, because, of course, all the girls are wearing dresses and uh, the boys are looking pretty sharp. And there's such great expressions, happy expressions, uh, lots of smiles on this uh, great photo third graders at Conger Elementary School, 1954. We don't have names for these kids, and so if you see yourself in this photo or you know someone that's in this photo would love to uh, get some names uh, for this photo. 
Right, so uh, back to fair view. I uh, was not able to come up with a picture for the, excuse me, Fair Haven, the Fair Haven School out by uh, Weyerhaeuser. I looked for a picture of Altamont School and uh, found this one and printed it out. And, and But then I started to question whether this was Altamont School or not. Altamont uh, opened as a school in 1926. I was outside the city school district at that time. It was one of the uh, county schools. But looking at this photo, I, I'm not sure what to make of it because on the right-hand side here, you can see there's a hill in the background. And I don't see how we could get that angle with a hill in the background behind Altamont. So I think we might have a mislabeled picture here. If someone can help us out, straighten us out on what that school is, uh, we'd love to have information on that. We want to look at just some of the uh, county schools that are within the uh, urban growth area here of Klamath Falls uh, out in the south suburban area. These are going to be county schools now, but they're within the Klamath Falls area, so we didn't include them in our rural school program uh, four weeks ago. Uh, so we do want to cover some of these suburban schools. Uh, they came a little bit later. Um, this one uh, you might recognize as Peterson, which opened in 1949, named for uh, Fred Peterson, one of our early school superintendents in the early 1900s, a uh, great school superintendent and really oversaw many of the growth years of uh, Klamath Falls and the suburban uh, area, uh, sadly killed um, by a gunshot in the Cam uh, Klamath County Courthouse. Uh, he, having retired, was volunteering as a welfare commissioner and was interviewing clients, welfare clients, and uh, one of them came in uh, armed into the county courthouse and shot and killed Mr. Peterson and injured a number of other people, a um, couple of other people, I believe it was. And so uh, this school named for uh, that man who served the community and ultimately lost his life while volunteering in service to the community. Uh, this school, I, I didn't get labeled. I think it's Ferguson, right? It's, let's see, it's not Peterson and it's not... Uh, um, it's not Brixner, it's not Stearns. I'm pretty sure this is uh, Ferguson School. If I'm not getting that right, I hope someone will comment on me and straighten that out uh, for me. But uh, you can see Hogback Mountain uh, in the background there. Okay, Ashley thinks it's uh, Ferguson School, so I uh, appreciate that uh, confirmation. Uh, Ferguson, let's see, opened in 1955. Yeah, okay, a lot of confirmation there that that's Ferguson, so I appreciate that. I don't have a picture of Stern's school, unfortunately, but I do have this one. And I wonder if anyone will recognize uh, this one. You can sort of uh, use the process of elimination to uh, figure out what school this might be. This school no longer stands. Um, so we named Stern's, Ferguson, uh, Peterson, Altamont. Um, so I wonder if anybody can identify uh, this school. I'll give you a hint. Uh, this building burned down in 1967. It had been built in 1935, and it burned down one day in uh, 1967. Uh, the name of this school was uh, Shasta Elementary School. Shasta, out on uh, Madison Street. And uh, so the new school was uh, opened the following year in 1968. Of course, they uh, uh, went right back and built the school. But what a beautiful building uh, this was. It uh, served the community only for about 32 years uh, before it burned down. So, yeah, we got some good guesses there, and some of you are guessing correctly that uh, that's Shasta Elementary School. There have been a number of uh, private schools, parochial schools, um, Christian schools in town, and so you might recognize this one. I wonder if there are any alumni of uh, Sacred Heart School uh, watching this evening. This school stood uh, on 8th Street at, uh, let's see, would that be Jefferson? I'm pretty sure that's Jefferson Street across from um, St. Paul's Episcopal Church up there. So this uh, school I didn't get a date for when this building was constructed. I know it was our first um, private uh, religious school in town established by uh, the Catholic Church 
As early as 1917, records indicate uh, Sacred Heart uh, had a church, uh, excuse me, a school here in town. And so this uh, building built not long after that. Uh, one of the things I love to show about this photo, and I've shown this photo in a number of programs uh, over the years that I've been with the museum, but I love the swing set in this photo. Uh, that's when they really knew how to build swing sets. A nice high swing set. I bet you could really get uh, a swing going on that thing. And notice that this swing set is equipped with a ladder. Yeah, Lynn LeBlanc picked right up on that. Uh, a ladder. So, you know, when I was a kid, we had to shinny up the poles, which was hard for me. I wasn't that good of a climber. But uh, this one actually had a ladder, and man, look at the kids sitting up on top of the pole, uh, the cross beam there, and sliding down the pole, and of course the nuns uh, down here in the foreground not seeming to care. This is a scene that I dare say you would not see at local schools today. I mean, first of all, they don't allow swing sets to be built nearly this high uh, these days, and of course uh, kids wouldn't be allowed to climb up on the beam uh, like that. But what great fun it must have been at uh, Sacred Heart School. This photo probably dating, uh, I want to say, to pretty early 1920s or 30s or so. Here's another photo that's going to show uh, the Sacred Heart School. This picture taken a little bit higher up on uh, uh, Jefferson Street, if I had that right. You'll notice that um, St. Paul's uh, Episcopal Church has not been constructed yet. That would have been built uh, right here on this corner. And so here is the old Sacred Heart School here, and there's the swing set that we were uh, talking about. So a nice view of Sacred Heart, our first uh, religious school here in Klamath Falls. There have been a number of other religious schools established over the years. The next one established that I know of was the Seventh-day Adventist uh, school. I found a reference as early as 1947 where they were planning to establish a school, and I think by the early to mid-1950s uh, they had established uh, the, the Adventist school. Uh, they had a building out on um, Main Street, out in the uh, Ponderosa School area. I'm going to show you a picture of where that location was here in just a minute. Uh, the next private Christian school to come along, at least that I know of, was Hosanna Christian established in 1989. A triad followed a few years later, 1995, and New Horizon, also New Horizon Church here in town, uh, opening a school in 2011. I don't have pictures of any of those, um, but I did want to acknowledge the uh, private schools that have um, been established over the years, and not all of them religious. There have been a number of private schools, especially back in the early 1900s, uh, there were private schools that operated in various locations around town. I don't have that subject researched, so I won't go into that other than to acknowledge that uh, uh, that there were a lot of private schools. There have been so many other schools that I haven't gotten to tonight, um, some that we didn't get to a couple of weeks ago. I, I didn't get to O'Neill School. Um, I would like to have told the story that Cindy DeRozier shared with me the other day about how, I believe it was O'Neill, she said that... Um, uh, they installed new windows in the women's bathroom, and the windows were uh, the kind that you could see through only one direction, so the intent was to create privacy for the ladies. But the ladies noticed that there were male figures uh, gathering outside the window, and it turned out that the window had been installed backwards, so people could see into the bathroom, and the ladies, it took them a little while to figure out what was going on, and so apparently they, they got that... Uh, that corrected. So let's see, I guess I just told told the story that Cindy DeRozier said I wasn't supposed to tell, but I, I just couldn't help it. I thought that was such a great uh, story. Uh, Cindy also shared stories of other educators and school board members that have served in the community over the years. You know, we didn't mention uh, in this program the many teachers, the uh, classified staff, the custodians, uh, the coaches, and the school board members, the administrators, so many people that have built and operated our schools over the years. There have been some, some great, great personalities, and we probably ought to take some time to, uh, to explore some of those stories sometime. But I want to wind up here tonight with another school that some of you may have noticed that I haven't mentioned, and that would be uh, Ponderosa Junior High. 
So I'm going to let you study this picture for a minute and see if you can figure out where Ponderosa School, I won't call it Ponderosa Junior High, we'll just call it Ponderosa School is. In this photo, we're looking at the Mills edition here. Oh, excuse me. Here's Mills School on the left-hand side of the photo. And so, of course, we're seeing the A Canal going across the photo here. Crater Lake Parkway does not exist yet. There is a little bit of a road here that probably was intended to be an extension of Alameda Avenue, but there was no certainly no pavement at that time. It would have been just a, a rough road. So here is Main Street coming in the photo in the upper left-hand corner here and crossing the A Canal. At that time, the bridge lined up with Old Fort Road. And so the bridge was replaced. Uh, I saw that date uh, last week, but I can't remember when it was, 1950s maybe, when the, a new bridge was built here and it lined up with Main Street. So this is Main Street then coming across the A Canal and up over this little hill to this area here. And so this is Williams Street right here. And so way back up here, up in the open, is Ponderosa School. Originally, um, an elementary school, and it had different grade levels in it at different times, and I'm not entirely clear on uh, what grades were in there, but I know it was not originally a junior high. It was originally serving elementary students, <coughs> with many of them coming from the Mills edition. On the A Canal here, you can see a footbridge going across the, river, uh, the canal, and that bridge no longer exists. There's actually some footings that still exist, if you know right where to look. But this was a bridge that students could cross in order to uh, get up here to uh, Ponderosa School. You might wonder what these buildings are here. Some of you may uh, know this already, but these were uh, housing units created for uh, the Marine Barracks up at the top of Old Fort Road. About three miles up this road was uh, the old Marine Barracks. And so uh, this was created for housing for folks that were either working at the Marine Barracks or perhaps related to someone who was uh, at the Marine Barracks. Uh, after the Marine Barracks closed, these units continued to serve for some years as apartment buildings. Of course, they weren't intended to be permanent, but they were used for some years after the Marine Barracks closed. Um, uh, eventually, all of these buildings uh, were removed, and of course, Ponderosa School was added onto. It uh, became a junior high at some point, taking the place of uh, the old Fremont Junior High and expanded, and so much of this area here is now the campus for Ponderosa Junior High. We've got uh, a photo that actually shows that footbridge. I'll have to turn this around a little bit and uh, see if I can adjust the camera to show the footbridge going across the A Canal, and there you can see Ponderosa Junior High in the background. And so students going across here would have had to trek up across the countryside here uh, to get to the school. You can see that uh, the housing units have been uh, removed at the time this picture was taken. Uh, there's an interesting looking car. Uh, I have no idea what kind of automobile that is. Um, but the vintage of this photo I think must be in the 50s and uh, yeah so I don't know what kind of car that is. But one last story to tell about the trials of being a student at Ponderosa Junior High. Uh, this story from 19, um, I didn't write the date down, 1971, I think, maybe 1972, Ponderosa students race against danger. Uh, what an exciting headline. So the danger that was posed here was crossing Alameda Avenue. This was in the days long before it was called Crater Lake Parkway. So as the town was growing and as Ponderosa uh, became an important junior high school and as the Alameda bypass was being improved, traffic started picking up speed and there is more and more uh, traffic along Alameda Avenue, what we call uh, Crater Lake Parkway today. And so we had students that still needed to cross from the Mills Edition area uh, in order to get to Ponderosa Junior High. And at that time, there was, had not been much uh, planning about uh, pedestrian safety. And so in, uh, I think this was in 1972, the Herald of News ran a story about the danger that kids faced 
there were two problems. One was getting across um, Alameda Avenue, and the other was that Main Street up in that area had no sidewalks. And so for about three blocks, kids had to walk from Main Street up to the school or in the afternoon back the other way, three blocks coming back from the school back down to Alameda Avenue to cross the A Canal and go back home. With no sidewalks, the kids just had to walk out in the street. And so uh, here we see uh, some kids with their 1970s fashions uh, passing by some uh, vintage vehicles here. And our final photo that we had to show you uh, shows these same students crossing Alameda Avenue here with what looks to be a fairly quick gait. And again, we see uh, the knee-high socks and some interesting fashions. Ponderosa Junior High students in the 19, uh, early 1970s. I think this was 1972. Well, that's the uh, collection of photos that we have to show you tonight. As I mentioned at the beginning of our program, uh, this is going to be the last of these videos that we do for the time being. Um, we're planning to open the museum tomorrow when Klamath County opens phase one of the reopening from this uh, pandemic that we've been dealing with. I know a lot of folks are looking forward to like getting haircuts and uh, sitting down in restaurants to eat. And we hope that if you have time, you come by the museum sometime. Again, the uh, Klamath County Museum will have a kind of a soft opening with limited numbers uh, starting tomorrow. And we understand that the Fable Museum is planning to open next week. And I want to encourage you to pay them a visit as well. And then we'll be opening for Klamath and the Baldwin Hotel Museums, uh, if everything goes well, on Memorial Day weekend. We're also planning to start uh, to go back to some of our more conventional type activities that we offer at the County Museum, including some outdoor walking history tours. We're going to start with a tour up at Linkville Cemetery on uh, next Saturday, a week from Saturday, and we'll be announcing information on our Facebook page and also in the media. Uh, there will be limited space uh, for those outings. Um, we, we have to limit the space in order to stay in conformance with uh, with the restriction on group size. So we, we certainly won't have more than 25 people. And uh, as always, I want to encourage everyone, if you're in uh, confined spaces, think about wearing your mask, uh, just so that we're not uh, coughing or spitting our germs out on other people or on surfaces uh, where we might go. So um, thank you for watching this evening. We've had a great crowd, lots of great comments. I look forward to reading your comments. Uh, this will, by the way, be posted on Facebook um, within a few days. And uh, so we invite you to share this, uh, this video link uh, with uh, anyone you think might be interested. Again, my name is Todd Keppel. I'm manager of the Klamath County Museum. We thank you for your support, and thanks for watching tonight. Have a good weekend.